Hello everybody and welcome to another video brought to you by me, Jack, VintageElectronicsGeek.com. Today's video is going to be about this um, Micronta catalog number 22-204 volt ohm meter. A couple of things are going on with it. One, um, it's broken. So we're going to repair it. Or let me put an asterisk star by that. We're going to repair it. You're going to repair it. I'm going to watch. No, I'm goofing. We're going to attempt to repair it. This was a eBay purchase. I paid, uh, well, I paid 99 cent for it. Can't go wrong with, for that, can you? I paid more for shipping. A couple of dollars. Don't remember. The item looked clean. Was a unknown if it worked kind of thing, and I thought, hey, can't go too wrong. I actually bought it for a purpose. That's right, one, a singular purpose. Not that I need another voltometer. No, no, or nay, nay. I have many, but I needed a um, analog meter, solid state. I do have a tube analog. I just didn't want to dork with it because it has a hardwired cable coming through the front. And those of you who played with devices as such know that it's a pain in the, the backside to deal with. And I didn't want to deal with it. So I got this device right here. One purpose. One purpose. And you're going to ask me, Jack, what is that one purpose? Well, I'm going to tell you what that one purpose is. Simply to tune up radios. That's right. You hook this up to your um, earphone or your speaker output and watch the meter rise up and down as you're adjusting the slugs with your twiddle stick. You could do that with your uh, oscilloscope or even with your ear, but this thing gives you a, a more visual. So why this, why this one? Why this particular model. Well, not necessarily this model per se, but this type of meter. You could use, you should be able to use any, just about any analog meter to do this. Um, for this scenario, uh, generally a VTVM is what's uh, required. Volt ohm voltmeter or vacuum tube voltmeter. There we go. But this one will work. This is uh, 600 ohms, as you can see right there. We also have a dB gauge. And we've got a pretty little mirror to look at ourselves. Now that's to help calibrate the meter. Um, or get a, a better accurate um, measurement. And so that, that's really the only reason why I bought it. 600 ohms dB meter. But I really don't think you need the DB as long as you get the 600 ohm, get the right tool for the right job, right? Generally, um, I could pick anything up, as most geeks can, without reading the manual or having anybody instruct you. You just pick it up and you know it just as quick as you pick it up, you, you know it. Maybe twist a little knob, turn a little button, do something. But you got to figure it figured out in 30 seconds. I'm afraid that if I were to use this as a regular volt ohm meter, as it was intended, well, not as it was intended, but as is, I I'm afraid my, uh, my, my geek card might get revoked or suspended. I hate to admit this, but I, I think I'm amongst friends. And I could tell you, you're not going to tell anybody, right? I cannot figure out how in the world to work this stupid thing. Let me explain it to you. Generally, when you turn it on, you swing it to a meter, um, to a range rather, you would just simply mm -hmm, pick that up and go up here and find your range. Problem solved. Done. And then that's how it would work for the rest of the ranges. I got to tell you, not so much on this little guy. This is a, um, 
a range doubling meter. So when you flick this switch up to VA2, that's going to set it up to double. So if we're looking at the 250 volt scale, when you go to your double, it's now going to go to 1,000. So these two right here would correspond. Well, what happens if you flip it over to your 50? You only got 150. You don't have 150. Go to your 10. There's no 20. Go to your 2.5. Well, heck, there's no 2.5, let alone 5. And even down here with a quarter of a volt. Same thing. Now, you can come down here and try to find it, right? But that's not how it generally works. Same goes true with your, uh, your volts. The only thing I was really able to get to respond was the, uh, the resistance. It's all goofy. But that's okay. This is only for one purpose, one purpose only. Not going to use it for any other aspect other than what I'm going to use it for. Technically, or not technically, but realistically at this point, I don't know. You grab the book, and you go through the book, and it tells you absolutely nothing. This book is only seven pages. Comes with a schematic in the page as well. That is kind of cool. Try to read the decibel uh, gauge. Dude's on crack. Or maybe I need to be on crack. I don't know. I wonder if this is still uh, valid. Maybe they'll help me. Anyway, like I said, I, I don't really care. As long as uh, I get the dumb thing to, to work. It works to a degree, but it has problems. It has two problems, and we're going to get into that real quick. Actually, we're going to get into it right now. I don't know why I was said real quick. Um, switching over the uh, from uh, normal volt ohm amp meter to the doubler, the switch is sunk in. It does work. Okay, you'll have to believe me. It does work. I thought this section here was broken. I've already opened this up, but what had happened was this screw has a uh, the screw. The switch has a plastic body. The plastic body has uh, two set screws that runs through it that mounts to a a metal chassis. Well, I guess over time instead of sliding the switch, they've pushed it down and then slid it up or down or wherever. By doing so, that eventually poked, uh, reamed out the plastic holes. So a simple fix on that is just to put washers and that, that should be done. All other functions about it work. Uh, one other reason I bought this meter over uh, a cheaper meter that would do what I'm looking for is this one actually has real live banana jacks as opposed to um, pin jacks. Did not want pin jacks. I did get the leads for this. Uh, I think the leads need to be addressed as well. Just basically cleaned up and re-soldered on the ends. Show you that uh, at the end when we do that. With all that said and done, let's go ahead and flip it over, crack it open, and take a peek on the inside. I, I did get the box with this. We'll look at that all at the um, towards the end of the video when we finish this up. The, uh, the front cover of the box has some uh, condition issues, but that's okay because I was not, I'm sorry, I did not buy this for a collector piece, so that's okay with me. This case only has two screws to open it up. So there's one screw, two screw, and you see. I should have had it off its kickstand. So 
what the innards look like. Uh, date and time when this thing was made. Well, I don't know about time, but date. I'll throw that up on the screen as well. As you can see, it takes a 9 volt and a double A. Here's the, the switch I was referencing. And I'm not sure if I can get the camera angle in where you could see right there. So we're going to clean that up and uh, get that put back together. Should be relatively easy. The other problem with this, it uh, it does work. You cannot calibrate the uh, the meter and you cannot get accurate readings. Any idea why we might have that happen? We have a uh, blown resistor there. Can't really make out the marking on it, the value. I wouldn't think it'd be too terribly hard to figure out with a, I don't know, voltometer. The bring you back the owner's manual. Again, there's the schematic. Where this component is, is over here on the resistor side. Again, not sure which value that that is, because you can't uh, call charred. So troubleshooting shouldn't be too too hard. You just come over here and you say, "Oh, okay." Each one of these corresponds to each one of these. Go with your voltometer, test them see which one works, which one doesn't, and that should be theoretically fast and easy uh, find, fast and easy fix. These are going to be uh, more than likely one percenters, and I do believe I have one percenters on hand. I'm pretty confident I do, and we'll put that back together, and it should be an easy fix. While I'm scrolling through this slowly, I want you to see if you could see one thing at face value that we are not seeing. And I'll confirm once we pull this board, but I'm pretty confident what you're not seeing, because I didn't see it on the uh, manual as well. That's right, a safety fuse. So, could be a good reason why the resistor blew, because there's no safety fuse. Kind of cool, kind of neato. Could be a date code right there, 10 A alpha 4, 1980. 1990. I'll throw it up on the screen if I haven't already and then we'll see uh, confirm the date. Tear this apart, tear this apart and reassemble it. Um, reading online there are other meters such as Sears and some other brand that I can't remember, TechLite or somebody that is also very similar to this. Um, and I'll throw this up on screen. This was kind of a, um, a take on a better quality meter, and I can't remember the brand. I think it starts with an S. And in order for Radio Shack and other companies to keep costs down to get out an inexpensive meter, they've come up with this kind of design with their their switch here where it's kind of in the open, those fingers are in the open, as well as other cost-cutting measures. I would imagine all these meters here are going to be made by the same company, all these um, 
takes on the on the better brand. One thing I did notice online, people talked about in trying to calibrate this meter. These right here. They say that uh, if you do not have a service manual for this, don't touch them or you're going to be SOL. As far as the service manual is concerned, I guess there is none. None available in the uh, public domain. And I'm not sure if Radio Shack would still have any. And if they did, would they sell you a copy? I would imagine if that last statement was true, there would have been. But um, I don't know. Actually, it looks like we have a uh, resistor down here. And... Maybe another one right there. Looks fat like a like a capacitor. So I have to get the bionic eye out to check that. I also, I know I could look in the uh, the schematic and that'll tell me. I don't think that's a capacitor. I don't know why there would be one. Guess I'm smoking crack again. Okay, let's let's go ahead and uh, start on this thing. I think in order for the switch, what I have to do, I think I have to. I think I'm going to have to take the meter out to separate the, the, the case. Because we have this screw here where we got the head down. And that's holding. Or what is it holding? I think it is holding the, the, the halves of the case. Where this screw up here, the head comes from the front so we have to access it through this way so we're gonna have to uh, see what kind of magical mystery stuff we could do I think actually I'll I'll, uh, I'll just get it from the, from here first and work backwards let's do that shall we